For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He that believes on the Son has everlasting life. He that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. It's plain and simple. Salvation of God is free, and it is only wrought by Jesus Christ. The wages of sin is death. Who wants to think about death? And yet, it will happen to you. You will come to the point in your, in your life that you will cease from living. You will take your last breath. Your heart will beat its last beat. You will be dead. But that's not the end of life. The Bible proclaims that there is life after death. There's a heaven, or there's a hell, and that is all. There's no in-between, there's no virgins, there's no not knowing. For the scriptures say, these things have I written unto you that you may know you have eternal life. When you die, you are beginning your life. It's not over at death. You may think it's over. You may think it's done. You may want it to be. And yet God, the one that created us, said that there is life after death. Now how important is that eternal life? It is so important that God sent His Son to die upon the cross that we may attain eternal life through Jesus Christ. God our Creator has tried to intercede into your life that you may not go to hell. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of life is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. There is life after death. That life is by Jesus Christ. Without that life, it is hell. This life right now is not hell compared to what real hell is. In the event of hell, God sent His Son in love that we may obtain eternal life by the way that God said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. That is the words of Jesus Christ. God thought it was so important of your life after death that He sent His Son. God has told us to go all the world and preach the gospel. The gospel that Jesus died for our sins according to the scriptures, was buried, and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. Because you are going to die and face eternity. Now don't be fooled by your churches. It's not about Easter Bunny and colored eggs. That is a lie! And when you lie to your children about Santa Claus and Easter Bunny, you have sinned. The time of Easter, the pagan holiday, is the same time of the Passover, of the Jewish Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. When Jesus Christ came out of that tomb, and He wasn't carrying a basket, He's not hollow. 
He is loving and forgiving and willing to save your soul from a place called hell. A place where your chocolate will melt. You are going to die. And God says, I don't want you to go to hell. But I am a God of free will. I am not going to force you. You can do whatever you want to do with your life and life eternal. But I'm going to send people with my Bible, my word, and I'm going to proclaim to you what you must do to be saved. And yet you've got a choice. And your choice today is Jesus or no Jesus. And when you do take your last breath, and you wake up in hell because you were stupid enough not to listen to God, you cannot come back. You cannot redo. You don't get a timeout. You don't get people praying for you while you are in death. You wake up in hell. You stay in hell. What about the heathen in the world? No, what about you listening to the gospel in Daytona Beach right now? Don't you worry about the heathen. You worry about your soul because you are listening to what God has to say to you according to the scripture. And if you die as a fool dies without God, by hearing the big mouth that God has sent to you in Daytona Beach, you are without excuse. See, God is long-suffering. He is not willing that any should perish. And He sends out to the lost people, He sends out men that will speak His word faithfully about the subject of death in Jesus Christ. If, if there was no purpose after death, then there would be no Jesus Christ. If God did not see the desire of man after death, He would never send His Son. You would not be listening to the Bible being preached to you right now. You would eat, drink, be merry, drop dead, and that would be final. But that is not final. And God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. That you may believe on the Word, believe on the finished atonement, the finished merit of Jesus Christ alone to be saved. What we preach is hell. And you're going there without Jesus Christ. We will not dare to tell you to go to hell. We dare to tell you not to go to hell. Whatever man or religion has taught you about the afterlife, unless it's the salvation-saving grace of Jesus Christ, it is a lie. You cannot pray somebody out of death. That is an unrighteous God. Because there are some people who are going to die and they don't have family. They don't have loved ones. They don't have anybody to care for. So they just burn in whatever they burn in for all eternity without anyone ever caring. Well, you can have that unrighteous God and stick him in hell. Because the love of God is Jesus Christ. Your loved ones may run out of money. Jesus Christ's blood never runs out. It flows for all. The 
love of God is that you are going to die and go to hell, and God says, I don't want you to go, but I want to give you a choice. God's not going to force you. When you come to Jesus Christ, you've got to come to Jesus Christ alone and of your own merit without being forced by church, without being forced by parents, without being forced by spouse. You've got to come to God on your own. And you've got to come to God as a sinner. See, the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Death and a Savior. You will die, and you do need the Savior. Man can get life insurance, but Jesus Christ is the death insurance, and Jesus paid that premium. Your works cannot outdo what Jesus has done already. Your church is not sinless. Like Jesus Christ is sinless. Your water baptism is not seated at the right hand of the Father. As Jesus Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father. You see, religion is man-made. Jesus Christ is God-approved. And you may not want to think about death. You say, I came here for oranges. I came here for strawberries. And you may never, ever finish this day. There is a possibility that death may come to you right now. Or later on today. You may never see tomorrow. Tomorrow never comes. And the Bible says, go in all the world and preach the gospel. God does not want you to give Korans to children in Africa. He does not want you to give shoes to people in Asia. He does not want you to feed the people of Europe. He wants you to preach the gospel of His Son, Jesus Christ. I feed the homeless, you may think. Yeah, just pump them up for the fire. Make them fat and juicy. I got a horn for that one. I got an amen. It's not about food. It's not about a drink. It's not by works. It's by your soul is eternal. And God says, I love you enough that I sent my son. I love you enough that I am sending men and women out to you with the Bible to tell you what I expect from you. And that's God. What more love of God can you get but a preacher that preaches the gospel? The love of God is that you're going to die, but you can die in His grace and His mercy by the finished work of Jesus Christ. That's not to be taken orally. It's to be taken by faith. You are to come to God as the sinner that you are. And to repent of your sin. And to believe that that Lamb of God can take away the sin of the world. Your sin. And you are a sinner. You are a filthy, rotten, stinking sinner. And when the Bible speaks about our righteousness, it says it is 
is a filthy rag. There's a worldly term for a rag. <laughs> and God says, you are that, if I can be so clean. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. God sees you without Jesus, filthy and vile and wicked, a child of Satan. With your religion. In order to please God and be clean, you need to be washed in the Lamb. You need to be cleansed by the blood that is God's blood, Acts 20, 28. And the blood of God is Jesus Christ. Again, not to be taken orally. If you eat and drink Jesus, you are a cannibal. You are vile. You are wicked. And you violate in the Bible where you're not supposed to eat any blood. So if the Bible says don't eat blood and you proclaim to eat Jesus' blood, you're a double sinner. Because your soul rests upon what Jesus done, not what your church has done. And that is including the Baptist church. The Baptist church ought to know better. Ought to be better. And yet, it's worse. The wages of sin is death. It will come to an end on this planet Earth. One day. Someday. Maybe today. I look around at some of you and I, hey, it could be today. No matter what age you are. There may be in your body right now a little piece of, in your cells, in your bloodstream, and by afternoon you may not be able to know anything, be able to do anything anymore. Go to the hospital that's just west of us. There are a whole bunch of people in that hospital that had all kinds of plans for today, and they don't do them. Somewhere in the world today, there is going to be, and there is probably a funeral happening right now, of somebody who thought they had tomorrow. And yet you all have plans, whether a to-do list, whether it's on your phone, but you have plans for today. And God may interrupt those plans with your death. And no one ever plans to go to hell. And yet you can make plans to go to heaven by Jesus Christ in the finished work at Calvary right now this moment. You can reach out on the 25th of March and have your name written down in the last book of life that when you do die, the Bible says to be absent from the body and present with the Lord. Don't follow that light at the end of the tunnel because 1 Corinthians 11 says that could be Satan. In God's mercy and grace, and He knows your date, you don't. We've been here, I don't know how many years. And I guarantee there are people that were here, that heard the gospel, and are in hell today. Saying, oh, if I could hear that loud mouth again. When you proclaim talking on the phone, tell them about Jesus saves. To find out 
if these words that we preach to you are right. Because I guarantee I was in your shoes. You probably think that this is a bunch of baloney. And you have that right as Americans. But when you wake up in hell, it's too late to say, oh man, he was right. When you die, it is too late to do anything about your eternal life. Now is the day of salvation. Now. God says, come now. I mean, I, I've got health issues. And the main reason that God may be having me live, I don't know, is the fact is that you might hear what God has for you. And that is the love of God is Jesus Christ being preached. You have survived another seven days to hear what God expects from you. Some of you are brand new. You, you don't know what's going on. And what we're doing is we're preaching to you about Jesus Christ and that there is life after death and you need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. The preaching that you hear is in the Bible. The vanity fair that's across the street is in the Bible. Oh, well, all these people, they're not listening to you. That's in the Bible. You don't even realize in your rebellion you are fulfilling the Bible. And the main point again today is you're going to die. And after death, you can't do nothing. Trusting and believing on Jesus as your Savior needs to be done before you die. On your tombstone, it will be the date you were born. And there will be the date that you died. And in between those two dates there will be a dash and that dash will include the new birth. The new birth is the day that you believed on Jesus Christ as your Savior. That dash, if it includes you receiving Jesus Christ as your Savior, will point straight north to heaven. If you never believed on Jesus Christ, that dash will point down to hell. You will survive death by eternalness. The man that believes on Jesus to be absent from the body, death, to be present with the Lord, eternal life. The man without Jesus was buried, and in hell he lifted up his eyes. The Gospel of Luke. That's what Jesus said about a man in hell. And Jesus did preach about hell. You'd be amazed what the Bible thinks and says to compare what you think and what you say. And it says that the love of God is spread aboard because we are going to die. And I said, if death was it, that's it. It's gone. It's, if you were to die and nothing more happened, there would be no Bible, there would be no Jesus, there would be no Calvary, there would be no loudmouth preaching to you right now because... Eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we die. And yet God says, that's not all. God looked upon the human race that he created and said, you're doomed. You're doomed to suffer without me. Oh, God kills the baby. 
says, Yet but God killed his son that you may have life. You know, you'll come up to a judge, not least he be judged, but you judge God. You judge Jesus worthless because you won't believe on him. You judge Jesus in precision because you can do something better than what Jesus has done for your soul. God, as a doctor, has prescribed a prescription for you after death. And it's written down in the name and the blood of Jesus Christ, and you are to receive that prescription before you die. The prescription. In order to attain eternal life, receive my son and the gospel finished work that my son has done for you at Calvary and at the empty tomb. That's the prescription of God. But some of you do not want the prescription of God. You want organic, you want whatever you want in the form of religion, science, atheism, any ism that you can find to disprove God and you'll be found a liar and without hope. See, the Bible says hope is in Jesus. Jesus Christ is the blessed hope. It's not the Blessed Virgin Mary. And if you think that is the case, come over here. I will hand you my Bible, and you show me where it says the Blessed Virgin Mary can save your soul. You tell me where there are virgins for people who die. You tell me where God says water baptism. And I will show you in the Bible that the Bible says, What must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. It's that simple. If church can save, which one? There are so many. If water can save, uh, city water, spring water, bottled water, what water? Salt water, fresh water? Polluted water, fire hydrant water, which water saves? And yet you are asking me which God saves, I will say the God Jesus Christ of the heaven and earth. I can pinpoint that down. See, when you say religion, Baptism, membership, you are saying Jesus Christ is not good enough. That what man has done is better than what God has done. And if you trust that when you die, when you die, if you are believing on anything but Jesus Christ, you will wake up in the, in the, in the flames of hell for all eternity. And you cannot say you're good because the Bible says there is none good. There are none righteous. No, not one. The only means of salvation after you die is to, before you die, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Death is more sure than taxes. Death is more sure than your next breath because your death, your next breath may never come. You're not guaranteed that next heartbeat. And don't rely on the medical or your doctors or hospitals, the way the government's going, they're getting rid of that. The only 
means that you can survive is by Jesus Christ. You can die and still survive with Jesus Christ. Death is coming. The wages of sin is death. But that verse is not finished. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. John the Baptist says, He that has the Son has everlasting life. He that has not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God upon your palm. The Bible proclaims that life without Jesus in the eternal life is no life at all. Hell is called the wrath of God, and that's what you get without Jesus. And you won't be happy there. You won't be partying there. You won't be drinking there. The Bible says it's torment. Torment. Tormenting. And the Gospel of Luke says you still have your eyes, you still have your tongue, you still have your fingers, and you still remember your loved ones. And the Bible proclaims that your loved ones are a concern of those people that are in hell. Like, go to tell them that they don't come to this place of torment. Those are the words of Jesus Christ, the one that never preached about hell. Your loved ones, co-workers, and friends that are in hell today don't want you to come. As far as that invitation to the party in hell, they ripped it up and burned it up. They don't want you to come to hell. They are sorry for all the times they said, go to hell. And Jesus said in the flames of hell, those people say, don't come. And we preach that God says, Isaiah 118, Jesus says by God, come now. Though your sins be as scarlet, the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. For the wages of sin is death. All men have sinned. You are in a sin condition. And if you choose to die in your sins, the payment is hell, and that's for all eternity. You say, well, okay, wait a minute. I don't want Jesus, but I can take care of my own sins. I advise you not to. Because to pay for your own sins, the Bible says you can pay for your own sins. But that is forever and ever without time in the lake of fire. You will never come out. That's how you pay for your own sin. And yet, if you were to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world, when you die, you'll die saved or lost. But when you die in Christ, to be absent from the body and present with the Lord. No religion can, can give you such assurance as the Bible says, these things have I written unto you that you might know you have eternal life. And the Bible, not so in words, says that if you were not to believe on Jesus Christ, you may know that you get the wrath of God. You either receive the mercy and grace of God, or you receive the wrath of God. That's hell. And you know there's
years of hell. And you know you're going to die. What you don't know is that Jesus saves. And what many of you, most of you is, you're hoping that the Bible's wrong. You're hoping you're good enough. You wish that that guy with a loud mouth was a liar. You wish I was a looney tune. You wish I was full of baloney. And yet God will stand before you one day and say, Hey, what did you do with my son? Oh God, I didn't know. I had no idea, God. Oh God, I didn't know. I sent that loud mouth to you and preached my gospel. Would you like to hear him again? That man that you despise on Saturday morning is a man that came to you with the truth about my son, Jesus Christ. And he told you what you needed to do. Oh God, would you, God, can I give you some oranges? You ain't got oranges. They're gone. When you stand before God at the great white throne judgment, the heavens and the earth have fled away. Mother Earth is gone. She's burnt up. She's destroyed. There's no sound saving the whales. There's no saving Mother Earth. There's no more sea turtles to escape. It is you and God and what you've done with Jesus Christ before you died. That you will face God in judgment after you die without Jesus Christ. You can be as physically fit as you want. You can visit the gym. You can have the ultimate diet, the, the vitamins. You can do all that you want to do for your health and you will still die. And still without Jesus Christ, you'll burn in hell. You can be young, you can be old. You can be fat, you can be skinny. You're going to die. And you need not to. The way to God is Jesus Christ. Faith and belief on what the Word says. Jesus says. Break down that wall of pride and step out and say, Hey, I'm the sinner. I didn't realize that my sins were doing that to me. I thought I was okay. I thought what I was doing was okay. But that preaching says, No, it's not okay. It's not okay. You've been sold by Satan and man. It's not okay without Jesus Christ. It is hell without Jesus Christ. Stop preaching hell, 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 hell. No, because that's where you're going. It's not pleasant to think about, and yet it's the truth. And I don't care what you think. I don't care if you're offended. God says go in the world and preach the gospel. The gospel is that Jesus Christ died for your sins according to the scriptures. He was buried. And he arose again the third day according to the scriptures. Now why? Because you're going to die. And you die without Christ, you're going to hell. I said already, if we were to die and nothing happens, then there would be no need for the Bible and no need for Jesus. But since man dies and goes to hell, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish. The reason why there's Jesus Christ is because you are going to die. Now your religion and man will say, Easter bunnies and chocolate rabbits and Santa Claus, so you will get your eyes off Jesus. And churches are doing it today. They get, they've already got their eyes off Jesus. 
And the very message is that Jesus saves. You have taken thanksgiving, one day given to God, and you have so polluted it. You eat that meal without even thanking God in, in hopes of watching that big skin and getting ready to go out shopping in the middle of the night this junk that you don't need and then cry about the credit cards in, in January. And then you say this big fat man breaks into your house in the middle of the night and says, ho, 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 I've been watching your children in their bed sleeping. You pervert. And yet God says, Proverbs 15.3, the eyes of the Lord are in every place beholding the good and the evil. It's not Santa Claus that knows, it's God that knows. And God knows you're going to die. And unlike me, God knows when you're going to die. I can't, don't come to me, I can't give you dates or times. And God said, because you're dying, and without hope. And that God is long-suffering, that He is not willing that any should perish. That He gave His begotten Son because He loves you. And because He loves you, He chooses out men who are saved with a Bible, who will take a stand and preach the saving grace of Jesus Christ to you. Because you're not going to hear this in your church tomorrow morning. You're not going to hear this on the radio dial. And the TV sure ain't going to preach this, this gospel. That's not the new thing. That's not what the majority of the people like. And yet we be faithful with the Word of God by what God has told you. That Jesus saved. There's nothing else that can save your soul. What you think that needs to be done has already been done by the finished merit of Jesus Christ. Nothing else. If your dependency of going to heaven rests only upon Jesus Christ, that He has saved you through the finished work of the gospel, you're safe. But if you are dependent to get to heaven with or without Jesus, and then with Jesus you add more ingredients, you're not saved. Because anything but Jesus Christ for your soul are artificial ingredients and preservatives that God will not accept. And God is not this big loving puffball in heaven that will take everything and everyone. The holy righteous God will cast you into hell without His Son. And He has the holiness and the righteousness to do it because He has sent us to tell you what to do to be saved. God has told us through the Scriptures, these people are going to die. They're going to die without me. They probably never heard about me. They don't know the way. They don't know the truth. They don't know about life. Take up that Bible and go tell them. And it's up to them to do what they need to do. It's up to them if they choose or reject what you are telling them through the Bible. I can't save you. All I can do is preach the saving message. Don't you dare go to God and say, that guy that preached to us Saturday morning, I, I trust him to get me that. Don't you dare put any faith in me. Because I'm a sinner. I couldn't carry you across this world, never mind carry you to heaven. And God says, 
You go tell them what the Bible says. You tell them what I proclaim. It's all about my son and what my son has done for them. And they choose my son, I will give them eternal life. I will make them my children. I will give them my Holy Spirit. I will give them the Comforter. I will give them the fruit of the Spirit. I will give them everlasting joy and comfort and grace and mercy in my heaven by Jesus Christ. You go tell them. And if they choose to reject my son, they are without excuse. And if they die without my son, I will throw them into hell because you told them what they needed to do and they rejected my words. So God would not be a meanie to throw you into hell because God is righteous and loving to say, this is what to do not to go to hell. It's like the Surgeon General. He writes in that pack of cigarettes, this can cause cancer. And then you get cancer and you go cry, baby, to the doctor. It's your own fault. You were warned. And God is warning you. What I'm saying is out of the Bible. Step out. I'll turn off this loudspeaker. I will deal with you one on one with the scriptures, with the Bible, on what you need to do to be saved. I won't talk about philosophy. I won't talk about men. I'll talk through the Bible, through the scriptures. James 4 6. Do you know what it means? You know James 4-6? What is it? Make America grateful again. Check it out. No America in the Bible. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. The love of God is His Son. The love of God is that... Go tell them. They're stupid. They think America's in the Bible. No, it's my Son. Jesus Christ, a name that's given amongst men whereby you must be saved. They got foolish ideas of the Bible. Go tell them the truth, please. They're fools, Proverbs 1. They're scorners, Proverbs 1. They're simple, Proverbs 1. That's the people. They're so foolish that they believe what they believe will get them by, and that's not what God has prescribed. Just because you think it doesn't make it so. How many years ago did people think the earth was flat? Well, that's not so. I mean, have you ever read about the ancient Egyptians and their medical practices? It would make you sick. But they believed that word. There was time that they actually thought the earth was the center of the universe. They've been proven wrong. Man, you have been proven wrong by science. You have been proven wrong by math. Don't let God prove you wrong when it comes to eternal life. Religion is man-made, but Jesus Christ is God-approved. without Christ, that's it. There's no coming back. There's no turning back. The choice for you is now. I will take Jesus Christ at his offer. I will become a Christian by the finished work of Jesus Christ. He can wash and only he can wash away the sin that's in my life.
that the only way I can get to God is by Jesus Christ. I will take that. That is the only way to heaven. There's no generic Jesus. There's no cheaper, cheaper form of atonement for your soul. It is the blood of Jesus Christ or it's nothing. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And the reason for the blood of Jesus, the reason for Jesus is because we are sinners and we're going to die. If life after death was nothing and, and nothing ever happened, we could eat, drink, and be merry, not listen to preaching, not have a Bible, and go about our lives till we drop dead and nothing happened. But that's not the case. There are people who are going to die and wake up in hell. And God says, I need to stop that. And he sent the prescription, his son, Jesus Christ. And not only did he send Jesus Christ, the love of God, he also sent Bible preachers to you to tell you what you need to do. And what you need to do is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. It's the same message every sentence. Nothing added. Week after week after week, it's nothing but Jesus. Not of works, least any man boast. And there's no ignoring it. It can't go away, it won't go away. Death is coming. And what you do before you die will assure your eternity. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And everlasting life cannot be settled after you die. It's got to be done before you die. There's no trial, Jesus. Try it if you like it. It's got to be taken by faith. There's no buyer's remorse. God has set your eternity right now as you're living. It's Jesus or it's hell. Are you okay? Yep. I gotta watch that step. You will die. You will face God. You can face God by Jesus Christ and get eternal hope. Or you can face God without Jesus and eternal damnation, condemnation, wrath of God. And if you're not going to do Jesus, enjoy everything you've got right now because when hell, you're not going to have it at all. There's no fruit in hell. There's no water, there's no bottled water in hell. There's no AC in hell. There's no wind in hell. And there's no one that cares in hell. There's no mercy in hell. There's no grace in hell. There's no life in hell. It's 
So God said, I'll provide a way that you may have mercy, grace, love, care, peace, long-suffering, joy, eternal life. Son, go to that cross and die for them. Let them bury you. You come out of that grave, that tomb, in three days. And you that believe on Jesus, get out there and tell them about my son. That's the word of God. That's the word of God. Nothing else. It's all about Jesus, what you do. There is one more giver who is able to save and destroy, who art thou that judges another. That's not about America. That's your Hebrew that's your James four twelve. And we're not judging you. But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. It's about Jesus Christ. What you do with him before your death will settle your eternity. But once you get out in the eternity, once it's forever, you can't come back. Now, I'm not talking about doctors that revive you and, and give you the paddles and you come back to life. You didn't die. The definition is death is you don't come back. When you don't come back, what you've done with Jesus while you were here, will settle. There is life after death. Eternal life or the wrath of God. What must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That's it.